first reading, a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 1 to 8, 11 to 14. In those days, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month they shall take every man a lamb. According to the father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then a man and his neighbor next to his house shall take according to the number of persons, according to what each can eat. You shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs in the evening. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the linen of the houses in which they shall eat them. They shall eat the flesh that night roasted with unleavened bread and bitter herbs, they shall eat it. In this manner, you shall eat it. Your loins guarded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast. And on the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall fall upon you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as an ordinance forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 116, verses 12 to 13, 15, 16 BC, 17 to 18. The response. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation in the blood of Christ. The cup of blessing is a participation. Oh, pray. 
of St. Paul to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 26. Brethren, I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, the chalice, after supper saying, this chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise to you. Jesus Christ, glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love one another even as I have loved you. The Lord be with you. And in your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verses 1 to 15. Before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And during supper, when the devil had already put up into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper 
laid aside his garments and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What am I doing you? What I am doing you, you do not know now. What I am doing, you do not know now. But afterwards, you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Simon Peter then said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but he is clean all over, and you are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, You are not all clean. When he had washed their feet and taken his garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? He said to them, You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am, for so I am. If then you are Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, it is a very special day. As we said, it is the first day in the Triduum, the three most holy days in Holy Week, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. I mean, that, that is a, um, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. Uh, there is a question that was asked, maybe we'll be able to answer tomorrow. We talk about Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday. And then the observation is made, but Good Friday is the day that Jesus died. What is good about Good Friday? So we'll answer that question tomorrow, God willing. Holy Thursday is a celebration of the Lord's Supper. We did have the morning mass, Christian mass. And today, this evening, we, are, we now celebrate the evening mass or the Lord's Supper. On this day, we celebrate three anniversaries. We had explained this a while ago, but today would be the most appropriate day to be able to talk about the three anniversaries. Number one, the anniversary of the first Holy Mass. This is the anniversary. Number two, 
the anniversary of the institution of ministerial priesthood in order to perpetuate the Holy Mass, to convey God's forgiveness uh, to repentant sinners, and to preach the good news of salvation. Number three, the anniversary of Jesus' promulgation of his new commandment of love. John 13, 34, we read, Love one another as I have loved you. First, we remember how Jesus transformed the Jewish Passover into the New Testament Passover. The Jewish Passover was, in fact, a joint celebration of two ancient thanksgiving ceremonies. The first one was the one done by the descendants of Abel, Abel the just. These descendants were shepherds. These people used to lead their sheep from the water pastures to the summer pastures after the sacrificial offering of a lamb to God. They called this celebration the Passover. Number two, the descendants of Cain. These were farmers. They held a festival, harvest festival, called the Masoth. Masoth is M-A-S-O-T-H. In this Mathos, they offered unleavened bread to God as an act of thanksgiving. Now, the Passover feast of the Israelites, as well documented in Exodus 12, verses 26 to 37, harmoniously combined these two feasts from the farmers and the shepherds. And then this was done in a ritual meal instituted by God to be celebrated yearly, thanking him for his miraculous liberation of their ancestors from the Egyptian slavery, their exodus from Egypt, and their final arrival into the promised land. Therefore, this is the day that Jesus, through a ritual act of feet washing, you, you realize that because of the COVID protocols, we will not be able to have the, the foot washing or the feet washing. However, I'll be able to explain that the act itself will not happen today for reasons known to all of us. And therefore we are saying that this day, uh, through the, uh, the ritual act of uh, washing feet, Jesus showed the depth of his love that would be expressed in its fullness on the cross the next day and made the sacrament of the sacrifice of the Eucharist. This pattern of deep love he set down as the standard for his followers. And who are the followers? It is ourselves. This is how Jesus' standards of communion, it is how it is it's explained. And from his perspective, Jesus, this is how he understands communion with Christ and communion with one another. It therefore becomes increasingly impossible to conceptualize communion with one another 
if we cannot wash each other's feet. It becomes impossible then again to talk about communion with Christ if we cannot wash each other's feet. Washing of feet was an onerous task at the time of Jesus. At the best, people wore saddles on paths and roads littered with loose garbage, crusted feet, often repulsive in the heat. This was the task of the servant slaves, not of masters. In taking off his outer garment, Jesus was in the garb of a slave. He proceeds to wash the feet even of his about to be betrayer. Still giving the opening for Jesus for Judas change of heart. You can imagine extending the hand of love and benevolence to somebody who is betraying you. On this I was I was thinking eh? Suppose suppose you had a job and somebody worked so hard to have you fired. And eventually, for whatever reason, the enemy was listened to and you lost your job. And God in his own goodness placed you somewhere else where you are doing very well. Later, you come to know who instigated your firing or your being sacked. And then just the way the Lord has always been the Lord, the mysterious God, Mugu Amajabu, one day when you are seated on the seat of Moses in your new company where you are calling shots, the same fellow shows up. Where you guys were, the job ended. And so this person is coming to look for a job. And the way life is mysterious, you are the one now who has the final say. Good people, ladies and gentlemen, lay people and religious in attendance, young and old, <laughs> please tell me, what will you do? Will you say that, thank you, Jesus, you have brought him here. You have brought her here. This is the time to yakulipisha. This is the time to, to know that I am the one who is saying whatever it is that I'm saying. If you are a Christian and a person who understands now the washing of feet, that will be your greatest test. Greatest test. Because you have to work very hard to make sure that uh, this person gets a job. You have to try that. And that would not be easy at all. Knowing that I am, I am helping my betrayer to get a job here. Knowing what they took you th uh, through there. You almost succumbed to depression. And here you are. God placed you. And he has enthroned you. And here you are. Your persecutor is now at your mercy. In the spirit of communion with the Christ and with one another, you have to take the basin of love. Because we are told that when Jesus held the basin, the basin is a symbol of deep, um, bottomless love of God. The basin, when you see the basin, in his hands, he was hold, he hold the basin of love. That is when you hold the basin. And you make sure that I will do what Christ would have done. Was he to come and sit on this seat of Moses? Jesus' love was lived in his life of touching the blind, the lame, 
the lepers, the possessed, and the penitent thief, and so many others. All the broken people were cleansed and embraced in the basin of love. This is exactly the communication today. That we must all go about our business holding the basin of love. This is going to be a very challenging night for the couples listening to these homilies or the homily of Holy Thursday. And maybe they have separated or have divorced or in the process of divorce. Or those young fellows who recently broke up. You know that can't be called separation or divorce because it could have been a union of criminality. But whatever it was, there was some friendship of sorts. Kakaumana. Whatever happened, happened. And maybe now somebody is saying that so-and-so is my enemy. Now this is the night we are being the greatest test that uh, we hold the basin of love. And we also must, we also must, again in our, in our time, we must welcome the blind, the lame, the lepers, mention all the names. All the broken people must be cleansed and embraced in the basin of love. Now tomorrow, Good Friday, we experience the humility, public humiliation of his being led like a lamb to the slaughter to find love in the darkened room of betrayal. This is now a special love. Remember, tomorrow we'll see the betrayal of the people who sang. I was watching um, the procession when Tanzanians were burying their, their, their late loved president. And you could see the streets littered with the people with the twigs and um, their lessons and some would even put them down. And I read one comment. Somebody was saying, how I wish that uh, this man can just wake up and see how many people loved him. But you see, that, that again now got me to the thinking of Good Friday. So you can imagine that's how you are mobbed by people who are singing your praises. Before the journey is over, and then they'll say, crucify him. And this is how life is. That uh, we face many a times the darkened room of betrayal. In which case, we are betrayed by the people we would not have expected. I don't know whether you have ever heard of a story about you, a story about you. And then it is revealed to you who was behind it. Now, the thought of who was behind it becomes more painful than the betrayal itself. To the extent you start even saying, Apana, has ya kafanya evil? Unaza kutetea mtu. You know, unasema, no, this person can't do that. No, I know, no, that's my, my sister. No, that's my brother. That's whoever, you know. That can't happen. I know I shared with you a story, a very painful story. I can't remember which month, but it was on this platform of a lady whose husband was stolen by her own young sister, blood sister. The younger sister, you invite her, educate her. One morning she wakes up, her and your husband, they elope. Now, one, marriage is broken. The pain of losing your marriage and the brokenness Number three, the pain of betrayal by the person whom you loved, your husband. But then there is number four, the person behind it. I know we may want to further this argument, 
No, the man should have known better. It is okay. I am not arguing on that front line. That is also very true. But we can suspend that line of uh, argument. There is your sister in the mix. And maybe you even fought for her to come and be with you in your marriage, in your own family. Maybe at some point even your husband was not comfortable with it. Maybe you tried because you wanted to help her. Or maybe somebody that you helped, a very close friend, you helped stand in business. And then one day, the person just messes you up. The thought of the person behind it, many a times, actually, is more painful than the act itself. Because you keep on asking, so and so can do that. Now, dear good ones, this is what we call the darkened room of betrayal. If you didn't know, the darkest room of betrayal is full of men and the women you would never expect. In fact, none of your enemies is there. None. They are busy doing other things of profitable nature. This is where we are reminded that in this darkened room of betrayal, we only need to enter there carrying one thing. Only one thing. The basin. The basin of love. It will never be simple. And it was never meant to be simple. Now, at the Last Supper, Jesus is giving his last talk to his followers before his death and reminding them exactly that. And that is why we will be reminded on Sunday that he died with so many wounds, five major ones, and resurrected with the five major scars. And then we ask, what for? And he has a glorified body. The answer is found on Holy Thursday. Because the lesson is, in the darkest room, betrayers will momentarily win and there will be death. But then, death will be defeated. It is death that will be defeated, not the killers. Now that is where, uh, when is it? Is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow we'll be talking about the paradox? Yeah, I think it is tomorrow. Good Friday. Talk about the paradox of the cross. Then you think about it, then you realize it is good to be a Christian. Because if you're not Christians, we can just be like animals. Because it can be so sad. Imagining that there will be betrayal, and then in this life, betrayers win. Jesus said, death is defeated. The one who kill you have not been defeated. They are still among you. They are among us. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are our spouses, our best of friends, our church members. This is the lesson that Jesus is giving tonight. We know how important a person's last words are, especially when they know that they are about to die. We cling on dearly to every precious word and gesture on that occasion. Jesus gives his clear invitation. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done. What is the example? The basin full of water. In this case, it is the basin full of love to go and wash the feet of your betrayers. To go and wash the feet of your persecutors. To go and wash the feet of your aggressors. To go and take upon the dirt. There is the other side of the same. The readiness that we are ready to go and wash the feet of them who do not mean well for us 
it means in, on, in, in reverse that I am also ready for mine to be washed. So eventually, we will decode that again as a basin of forgiveness. And maybe those who may not be in good terms, maybe what you need tonight is a basin. And when you declare you are longing to wash their feet, you'll be saying without, without using words that I'm longing for my feet to be washed. Because it is not only our betrayer's feet that are dirty. Our feet are also dirty. They too need to be washed. The last supper that followed became a ritual and a sacrament of expression of Jesus' total self-giving to us. The celebrant was also the sacrifice, a pure offering by a pure offerer. Jesus' sacrifice makes it possible, very possible for us to move from self-focusing darkness to the light of Christian living. Remember we talked about the darkened room of betrayal. We can be stuck in the darkness. None of us is meant for the darkness. There will be darkness all the time. Wherever we go, there will be darkness. There will be darkness in our workplaces. There will be darkness in our families. There will be darkness in the church. Right now and this night, there are so many families that are fighting. There is darkness in that family. Brothers and sisters cannot talk. There are families with lots of darkness. Spouses cannot talk. There are other places maybe. Maybe. Maybe that parent cannot talk to their children. There are places where worshippers and, uh, worshipers and their clergy are fighting. There is darkness in those churches. There is darkness everywhere. But none of us is meant for darkness. Because darkness is where there is pain, and a human person is more inclined, has a funny affinity to pain and clinging to pain, we are told that we must disassociate ourselves with that which is dark, which represents the darkened room in our life. There will be pain, there will be betrayal, there will be rejection, there will be mentioned them. Now this is a call, a call to service. It is to all of us, not for the priests, not for the pastors, not for the bishops and the bishops and the cardinals. It is for all of us. Our basin of love will soothe the brokenness of the helpless addicts in the myriad forms of appetite. Appetite addiction. Soothe, among others, the broken heart of the believed, those sexually and otherwise abused, the depressed, those worried and sick, the prisoners, the divorced, the separated, the paining. All of them, they are longing to see a basin, a basin full of, this time, this basin is not just full of love. This basin is not just full of water. Now we have removed water and love. This basin is full of life. Because again, we are reminded that when water meets love, they form life. So, we have to give life. Now that is where, now we go back to the prophecy of, of prophet Isaiah. That the spirit of the Lord is upon me to communicate life to the dejected, 
to free those who are in the prisons, various prisons of addiction, prisons of slavery and prisons of hatred and rejection, prisons of generational brokenness. We must carry the basin. We must go carrying the basin. Our basin of love will have to soothe our broken families. Our basin of life will have to soothe our broken marriages. Our neglected children, those who are crying, the families that are fragmented, the businesses that are dead and others dying, the relationships that are shaking and others dead. We have to keep the smoothening balm. We have to communicate this communion, carrying life wherever that we go. Now, that is what is meant by being in communion with Christ. That is what we will mean by being in communion with one another. It will become increasingly difficult for me to say that I am in communion with Christ, but I cannot talk to my brother. It does not make sense. It becomes difficult to say that I am in communion with Christ, yes, I, yet I cannot pick my daddy's call or my mom because Rikosana too. Maybe we cross the paths. I cannot, I cannot pick my partner's phone call. But maybe, maybe when I cannot pick my partner's phone call, when I cannot talk to my partner, I am in the church serving at the altar. I'm at the church leading the worshipers, doing all manner of things in communion with Christ. In communion with Christ. Father C.K. says that I am in communion with Christ, but in the congregation, there's somebody I cannot talk to. Because maybe we don't, we don't talk to one another, or maybe I have some issue with the, the tribe of the person, or maybe I have a problem with their political affiliation, or maybe, or maybe, mention the maybes. The communion with Christ is always complete when there is communion with my brothers and sisters and I can reach out to them. Some of them will be represented by dirty and stinking feet. The dirty and the stinking feet need our washing. The men and the women who have worked day and night to bring you down, you have to wash their feet. That person who worked so hard to kill and break your marriage, wash their feet. That person. That person who broke your heart to the extent that you have been trying to put the pieces together, maybe in heaven, they need to be washed. Go to them with a basin. The person who left the scar in your life, the scar that you even hope to take to heaven, please take the basin to them. Go and wash them. That could be the only assignment you are left to do before you meet the Lord. And maybe, just maybe, that is the only move they have been waiting from you for their conversion. Remember that when Jesus is doing all this, there is hope that his benevolence will change the heart of the betrayer. You may be surprised that the only move you made to go with the basin to the person who, brought, who left you into pieces, that was the only move they were waiting to get back to God. How many prodigal sons and daughters are we rocking out because of our hardened hearts? How many? How many brothers and sisters can we bring home who are we to open our hearts with the basins? Kila mwajawe tutoke nje na basins. Zimeja upedo. Zimeja uhai. 
zimejaa maji ya uhai maji ya, ku, ya kutakasa and when we are doing that we are also saying i know at some point i have been an aggressor i know at some point i have been a, have been a betrayer i know at some point i have been a bad person i know at some point i have been an addict and therefore i cannot ostracize an addict because i know what it feels i may not have ever been but i long to see everybody back home that i long to see everybody back home somebody is holding a big boulder did you know the basin of love takes away that boulder ile mizigo abayo wengine wetu tumebeba miaka na mikaka tumelia miaka na mikaka today we have been offered the basin the basin is coming from the person we participated in killing in killing and they are telling us my brother my sister it is time to go home the prodigals have been called home and the best way to do is to wash their feet as they go to the house of the father and the father is welcoming them and telling them my son the darkened room is not your portion my daughter the darkened room is not what i was meant for you because we were told the other day that even in the darkened valley of death there is life and there is light therefore a call to holy thursday is that we must get out there bring home the crusted bring home the broken bring home the dispirited lives that are living in unexpected places we go there and offer what father ck calls surprise or unexpected love extending love where in normal circumstances you would not have done i don't know whether you have ever done something and did you shock you 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 shock you, you shocked yourself you became shocked because you have done it you surprised yourself i never knew i could talk to that person akina venya dinifanyia and today tumeogea nimemsamehea am able to move and do you know when we are so bitter with people when we are so broken and in pain when we are so deep in the dark and the rooms it's like we are carrying lot and lot of baggages and then we we say it is that person who put me into this situation but then it is true that person put me in the situation where i am i'm being bogged down every day by the weight of the anger and bitterness i'm carrying today i say in the spirit of the feet washing enough is enough the moment i'll extend my basin it's a factor my lord will be taken away because it is at that point i will understand what we have always been told that when i forgive i am the beneficiary now you understand graphically what it means to be a beneficiary in forgiveness it is like i have taken away the load that i have been carrying i have been inconvenienced i will never inconvenience anybody i have been in pain i will never put them in pain again because by me being in pain for all those years i locked them out i never gave them a chance to come home to the father today we call them to come home for a charge of humble service we go out there yes we are limping when we are limping what do we need we need a basin and we are limping because life has immobilized as if you like but you may be thinking that you are limping but your betrayer is completely incapacitated you you are limping 
on Nikidogo, you can walk up to there. The person who put you in that situation, maybe they have never moved. Get out in humble service. Go tell them none of us was meant for what we are in. Because our current circumstance should never be our conclusion. This is not, this darkness is not our home. Our home is in the light of the Father. Then an invitation for sacrificial sharing and self-giving love. Self-giving love. It is no time to count what they have done. It is time to show what Christ can do. Not how many years I have cried, but how much Christ loves us all. Not how many people have been against me, but how betrayers can be turned into apostles. An invitation, finally, to become Christ bearers and Christ conveyors. Wherever we go, we are bearing Christ. As we move, as our belt of life moves, we convey Christ to others. I said the other day, we cannot call ourselves Christians, yet we are pedras of hopelessness. We are pedras of pain. We are pedras of jealousy and rejection. Today, Christ bearers must also be Christ conveyors. Wherever we go, we take Christ. To the heart broken, we take Christ. To the betrayed, we take Christ. To the paining, we take Christ. To those whose families are fragmented, let us go there and be the glue for that family to come back. If you are the family member who is bringing division in your family today, cut the basin. Go with it. I'll explain to you when we are doing the next month, we are doing the novena for family deliverance. And I will be able to explain to you graphically how to do family reconciliation. Graphically. Tonight, we can start. If I'm the problem in my family, it is the night to pick the basin and call my sister and apologize for keeping her out of the house of the father. And call my brother for keeping him out of the house of the father. Maybe whatever I'm going through, maybe I think that it is my brothers and my sisters who have jinxed my life. Nobody has jinxed your life. None of us was meant for darkness. None of us was meant for eternal pain. I have always said that pain has an expired date. If you didn't know, please know today. There is no pain that is eternal. There is no rejection that is eternal. None. There is no frustration that is eternal. If death was defeated, any human condition can be defeated. Christ is Lord. Thank you.